I tagged out last night. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bobby's Bucks and today I wanted to show you this monster three-year-old six-point that I shot last night with my wife's crossbow. You know, we don't see a lot of three-year-olds. This was one of the older deer that we had seen. We had a couple pictures of him on trail camera and he came out last night right at last light and the, he triggered the trail camera. He stepped out right in front of it and proceeded to walk right towards me. And last year we decided to hang a stand for a west wind. And that's what we happened to have. It was the first time that I had bow hunted the property all year long. So tonight we're in the back of the property sitting up in this new blind that we put in for a west wind. Last year we didn't have this, it's late season, December 3rd. We got a really good buck on our trail camera last night. He's not very wide, but he's got really cool tines. Um, looks like a three year old, so uh, if he comes through tonight, we're gonna hunt the last hour of the evening. It's about 30 degrees, it was 50 degrees yesterday, so hopefully this drop in temperature get the bucks to come through and eat some winter wheat. We'll see, here we go. And when I got into that new stand, it's, it's a nice ladder stand and it was incredibly comfortable. I sat there for the last hour, you know, sitting there texting my son, texting my brother, and you know, just relaxing and watching the sunset. And I look over to my right and I see uh, this, this big six point. I had seen him before on trail cameras. So he stepped out and walked in front of the trail camera and then he turns to the left and he starts walking right at me. And it was really nice because the wind was perfect. The wind's blowing right into the, the, the front of the stand. Sitting in the stand, we set it up last year so we could have a 15 yard shot. If you want to see that video, we'll put it up in the corner. It was almost like he, he got the script, read it and followed it step by step. He came out perfectly from the north and walked right at us and sitting in that blind it's it's got a cover over it it's really comfortable and when it's windy it may make a little bit of noise with that fabric flapping but uh, the deer don't get bothered by it at all and uh, when I seen him walking right at me for a second there because at like two o'clock and ten o'clock you have that little piece between the windows and I really couldn't get a shot I had to stand up and turn to my right and stick the crossbow out the window he ended up walking right up to the, the stand and he was eight yards out from the window to the right. When I went to look at this guy in the scope, I couldn't find him because my wife had her crossbow power turned all the way up. So I'm sitting there and I actually stopped the deer because he was running, I only had one shooting lane. And he was running right through it. I had to stop him and then actually try to find him in the scope. And it was only a matter of a couple seconds but I squeezed the trigger, the crossbow went off, the whole thing happened in the blink of an eye. Well, I had to stand up to shoot this buck. He just ran in here. I'm gonna reset this crossbow. And the buck ran off. A few seconds after, I heard him crash, but you know, you really don't know if he's just slamming through all the brush and making his way from the excitement or you're just kind of crossing your fingers. I immediately text my neighbors and just to let them know, shot a deer, gonna give it about an hour and just wanted to check with you if it was okay to go retrieve that deer. Um, of course they said yes, they're, they're good people. So I shot this buck about 520. So I waited until about 6.30. So when we went to retrieve the deer, we actually were babysitting Miles and we took little Miles with us. And that was his first time ever retrieving a deer. He thought it was really cool. And uh, he now he wants to go hunting and I'm so You ever recovered a deer? Cool, huh? Is These it, are all steaks. Timer, the timer's red, is it recording? And I'm super excited about taking him hunting at a later date. But the blood trail was terrific. Uh, we were, it was almost like a red carpet. We were able to follow that blood all the way to the deer, no trouble at all. It was almost like we never even had to get down on the ground. It was so visible. He actually ran about 75 to 80 yards, uh, but when we pulled the heart out, 
We actually shot him right in the heart. So he expired really quickly. Really happy with this deer. Um, I, you know, I set out to shoot a three-year-old and, and I was really excited to shoot him regardless of points. So, so I just wanted to share my story. You know, it was really exciting to, to get out there and, and hunt my property. It was the first time I had ever hunted the property. And I could tell that the wife was a little jealous too because she had hunted the property several times this year. And you know, I waited for that cold weather to trigger. It's actually muzzle loading here in Michigan. And, but I just didn't have time because I worked all day that day. And uh, it was only the last hour of that I went out and I wanted to sit but only because the trail camera was see we just we just got a couple bucks on the trail camera the night before we had a good eight point that came through uh, that morning early that morning so we were hoping some bucks were in the area you know there are a few does out there that haven't been bred so we were hoping we rolled the dice and and uh, you know sometimes when you strike when the iron's hot when all those conditions are correct you know it's always best to not try to pressure your property. We don't hunt this property very often, and when you don't do that, it allows the older deer to feel comfortable and come through looking for does. You know, this time of year, the bucks have lost a lot of weight. We went ahead and weighed this buck, and he, always, he only was about 150 pounds, which was surprising. He's been running really hard. First week of December, they're just about done breeding, and they're, they really have to put that weight back on. They have to hit those food plots really hard. So be sure you guys, if you have been having some weather uh, that's a little bit warmer and then it finally drops down to those cold temperatures like we had, it was about 30 degrees when I shot this buck. And that was a great trigger for him to come out, feed, look for does a little bit earlier into the night. So the first week of December, the older bucks are trying to breed those last few does that weren't bred on the first cycle. They're hitting the food plots really hard, those unpressured, secure food areas where they feel secure like this guy probably did because we don't hunt our property very often. Like I said, this was the first time I had hunted this property. I waited for the warm weather to trigger down to cold weather for me to go out there and sit. Every time we go out to our stands, we always spray our boots down until they're dripping. Even if they smell our tracks, we diligently spray our boots down. So if they smell them, they think that it's been days, not just minutes or hours. So. We don't mess around with that, we always take precautions because we wanna apply the least amount of pressure to our property as we can, so. If you guys are interested in how to cape a buck, I'll lower this down and we'll cape this. I'm actually gonna send this to the taxidermist and get a full sneak and add him to the wall. Um, I know he's not gonna score very well, but I still uh, really think this buck is cool. He is a three-year-old. So uh, here we go, I'll lower him down. So once you guys are done, go ahead and brace yourself and keep twisting the head and twisting it until, until the head just snaps right off. And now you have your cape and you're ready to go drop it off at your taxidermist. Look at how wide that thing is. Jeez, oh, Pete.